um, position yourself. And I think it's just a significant word just to, that we need to position ourselves. Now, on Wednesday night, we did the wait here. And uh, remember, the Lord said to us that those who practice the wait will begin to experience the weight of His glory, the weight, the, the heaviness of His presence and His glory. And, um, and so what we did on Wednesday was we waited here. I don't invite people to come on Wednesday night. We just waited in God's presence. And then what we did was we, it was a challenge to see what the Spirit of God was saying and if we were one in the Spirit and if the Spirit of God was saying the same thing as we waited in God's presence. And so then afterwards, we got together in a circle just to hear what the Spirit of God had said to each person in that time. We just spent half an hour waiting. And it was just so exciting how God started to put things together and confirmed what He's saying and doing in this time. And so I just want to kind of just elaborate on that because, you know, I think what happens is Without the body, we only see a small area. We only see a facet. And if we don't have the body, we don't see the whole. And we don't get a clear picture of what God's doing and saying. And it's just so important when the Lord says in, his, in the Scriptures that, that when we come together, um, one has a song, one has a hymn, one has a verse, one has uh, a word or whatever. But there's something of God building things that come together and we understand more. That's why we can't neglect meeting together. We need to come together because I begin to understand a fuller picture of what God's up to and what He's doing. You see, I, I was just reminded in the pre-service prayer meeting of um, Picasso, and he did um, the, the cubistic movement, and the whole cubistic music was to, uh, to bring in another element into the art, which was an, uh, the fourth dimension, which was time. And so you look at the art and you think, oh my gosh, that's just rubbish. But really what it is, it was the facets of the image as you walked around it and you saw different facets of it. So here's a two-dimensional facet that's representing four dimensions in it. And you see, sometimes we are not seeing the full picture and we just really need the body of Christ to start to see what God's up to. That's why we need everyone. Amen. You're all so important when it comes to the church because it's to fill everything in every way, the fullness of Christ. Amen. Hello. Amen. Thank you. So we kind of, we kind of you know, I was thinking of that movie, um, uh, The uh, Peaceful Warrior. Anybody seen the movie Peaceful Warrior? And, and the whole movie is about him sort of like slowing time down so that he can see. And we, we kind of need to do that. We need time to almost stop so that I can start to see without reacting all the time. I need time to see what God's up to. When there's a knock on my door, that I'm living intentionally, that why is, why is that person at my door? And then I start to live in another realm, another dimension, another understanding that God is always up to something. Amen. That's exciting. That's intentional living. I'm not just living. I'm not just stealing air. But I'm living intentionally that God is up to something. And I need to be aware of the realms that God is moving in. And the realms, the, 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 the facets that my God is moving in. And I need to get accustomed to those facets. And that I start to move in the same step as the Spirit of God. Amen. It's like time within time. Right? I once heard a scientist and he, said, and he spoke about time. He says, I spoke about eternity. And he says, to be able to picture eternity is like, this is our timeline. And so, uh, let's say, for instance, at this very moment in time, 25 past 11, in this very moment in time, 50,000 people are praying to God. Okay? Probably, hopefully, more. But... Let's say, for instance, that mound. So, and that's the timeline. At that moment, half, half past 11, he draws a perpendicular to that time 
and he answers everything in that moment in time. It's exciting, isn't it? You see, because God's outside of time, he can do what he likes. And so he can spend forever answering those prayers in that moment in time. Because he's not in our dimension. But that's the thing is, I need to start to live in another time realm and to start to see, to start to understand, to take in what God is doing and what he's up to. Amen. And so that's um, all that to say we need the body of Christ. Okay, we need one another so that we can get a fuller picture of what God's doing. And uh, like we said last, last week, God is going to do what he said he's going to do. Amen. And I can have full confidence that God is going to do what he said, what he's promised he will do because he's covenanted with his word. He will not dishonor his own word. Amen. Regardless of how bad you are. But he's covenanted with his word and he wants to do it. I kind of like see it as this. Um, we can run parallel to the goodness of God, the blessings of God, the promises of God. I can run parallel to it. What God intends. What God wants to do. But then at that moment of revelation that is followed with obedience, there's a bam. I come together. I get a revelation of what God wants and I'm obedient to what God wants and I'm no longer running parallel. I collide with the goodness of God. And that is a moment of the miraculous. That is a moment of kingdom at that point. Kingdom invades the earth. At that moment, I get revelation from the Lord and I'm obedient to revelation. Kingdom hits the earth. Isn't that exciting? So, in our waiting in the presence of God, um, Isaiah 54, and God's been speaking to us about this quite a bit lately. Isaiah 54, and I just want to read up to verse 5 there. Um, It says, Sing, O barren woman, You who never bore a child, burst into song, shout for joy, you who were never in labor. Because more are the children of the desolate woman than than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your tent curtains wide, do not hold back. Lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, for you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. Do not be afraid. You will not suffer shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. Amazing piece of scripture. Amen. And we've been looking at that quite a bit. It's been coming up. And, and, and there's something about there in that first part, let's say number one, the first part is a new song. Right? There needs to be a new song and certainly a heavenly song that needs to start coming from us. And that heavenly song needs to be the declarations, the prophecies, the things that, um, that God is releasing in, on the inside of us. I need to be calling things into existence in my new song. Amen. But part of that new song is also, remember we said, we need to start valuing the place I'm in. I need to value the place, even if it's a bad place, even if I find myself in a prison, even if I find myself in a box, I need to value the place I'm in. Because it's a place of transformation. It's a place where character is developed. It's a place where God is working in my life. And so no matter how much I, I want to I break out of that box, I can't break out of that box until I begin to value the place I'm in. And when I start to value that place, when I start to see this is a place God has put me in, it's a place of transformation, I can start singing. You see, barren woman, she starts to sing. Why is she singing? Because she knows her God is greater than her circumstances. 
And when she starts to sing, she becomes too big for that place that she's in. And that's when the miraculous breaks open. Paul and Silas in prison, they begin to sing. Why? Because they don't see the prison cell. They see their God. They become too big for that place. And that's when the earthquake breaks it open. The foundation of that place has to split because they've become too big for it. Amen. Amen. And so I need to start to sing. I need to start to sing. The first thing I do is where I'm at at the moment, I need to value that place and I need to worship and I need to sing and I need to thank God for the place I'm in no matter how small and cramped I feel in that place. And when I begin to sing, that's when God can break it open. And my new song is a different tune. My new song is I take on a different perspective. My new song is I start to see from a heavenly place. I change my tune. Amen. That's my new song. Enlarge the place of your tent. Psalm 16 verse 6 says, The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely... I have a delightful inheritance. So the second point there is, I begin to accommodate those boundary lines. Amen. I got to see where the boundary lines for me have fallen. I need to start to see the promises of God. I need to start to rejoice over the promises of God, see them clearly, and I need to start to accommodate that place. Do you understand? I need a perspective change. I can't stay living, a, living like a worm when, when God has said, I am to break open and fly. Okay? I start to change my perspective. I am going to fly. Right? And so in the wait... The Lord's, the, the, in, in that time of waiting on the Lord, in that time of just waiting in His presence and spending time in God's presence, the things that God wants to release in this time, in this season, this is prophetic now, okay? This is what God's saying right now. If you wait on Him, He is going to release revelation to you. He is going to release His heart to you. He is going to start opening up mysteries plans to you he is going to shine his light on the on the hidden treasures for your life and i believe that that could be absolutely anything that could be invention that could be absolutely anything that could just be whatever <laughs> but Waiting on the presence of God, the secrets, the hidden things that he wants to reveal in your life. Direction and stuff that he wants to bring. But you have to wait. Those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up on wings like eagles. They will run and, grow and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. In Habakkuk 2, which was another scripture that came up on Wednesday. Habakkuk 2 verse 1 and 2. Maybe we can just put that up. Habakkuk 2, verse 1 and 2. There's four things that we need to, we need to get hold of in this passage of Scripture. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. First thing is position yourself. That's what God's saying is position yourself. That's make yourself ready. Position yourself. Get yourself waiting on the presence of God. Make yourself wait in the presence of God. Okay, if it's not something you do, do it. Wait for in the presence of God. Look to see what He will say to you. That's amazing. Look to see what He will say to you. 
You know what that speaks to me of? All my senses. He's starting to say that in his presence, when God starts to speak, I need to start to get hold of the stuff of the Lord that my that my senses are all changed, that I hear, that I see, I smell, I taste, I start to get the full picture of what God is saying. That He wants to affect every sense in me. That's how I start to accommodate the boundary lines which have fallen for me in pleasant places. I start to become the vision. I start to become the Word of God. Amen? I become one with that, that I'm so familiar with the promises of God that I'm one with them. I'm tasting them. I'm seeing them. I'm hearing them. I'm smelling them. Amen. The second thing is write it down. Write it down. Write the revelation down. The third thing is make it plain. Make it plain. It says on. Make it plain on tablets. Okay. Now, have you ever seen these guys writing on tablets? Okay, it's not a ballpoint pen and you're like, you're not going to fill a, a, a page of writing. You're going to carve something out. So I really want to make it plain. I don't want to say too much. I want to make it plain that I understand with it. And, and, the, and another way of that scripture, it says, whoever reads it, may run with it. Whoever reads it may run with it. It needs to be so plain that I can run with it, that it's part of me. Amen. So that was the third thing. Whoever reads it, or the fourth thing, may run with it. Expand. Fill yourself. Fill the space. See it. Declare it. And what the Lord is really saying there is, will you say yes? Will you say yes? That when you are waiting in the presence of God and He begins to unfold His plan, when He begins to show you the blueprints for your life, when He starts to show you the things that you are going to be called into and to do, the vision He's got for your life, He's, he's, just, he's looking for you to say yes in every way. Amen. You see, church could be a really nice club where we can come together and encourage each other and we do this weekly um, and we sing some songs and it's nice because I can leave you, I can feel good. But it's, it's not that. It's this, where we say yes to the Lord, to His purpose, His plan, His will for our life. No matter what. Amen. That's church. That's maturity. And so I want to accommodate the full picture of the Lord. And, and I need to start to see it in its facets. And when we come together as a body, we start to see the full picture of what God intends for us as a body. We start to see the, the, the facets. Each one of you is so important to the full picture of what God wants to do in this place. Do you understand that? No matter what your age is, you are so important to the body of Christ. You are so important right here so that we can start to get together and see the facets of how we all fit together to fulfill the purposes of the Lord. And the third thing is... And it says there, okay, so enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Okay, so we said we've got to accommodate that place. The four, in verse 4, the, the, the third thing, do not be afraid. You will not suffer shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth. You will remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. See it spring up before you now. Amen. And that is a word that the Lord has been speaking to us. Forget the past. Do not dwell on it. Do not dwell on the past. The past does not dictate 
who you are. Amen. Amen. Those failures, those disappointments, those things that have, that have caused you to fear moving ahead because you feel as though you are unable, you don't have the qualifications, you feel you're a failure or you're insecure, those are not the things that should be dictating to you now. The Lord is saying, I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing in your life. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> that is something to praise God about. Is that I am not going to be afraid anymore because of my insecurities, the shame, the disappointments. And disappointments keep us so much away from moving forward. There is coming an increased anointing on the gifting and the skill sets that you have. I'm prophesying. Okay, I'm prophesying. There is coming an increased anointing on your skill sets and your gifting. At this time. There are even things that are hidden that the Lord is going to bring to the surface that you didn't even know you have the, had the ability for. Things are going to, that, the, that the Lord is going to uncover hidden treasures that He is going to bring to the surface in your life. Exodus 31 and verse 2. The Lord uh, took Bezalel and the Spirit of God came upon him for all kinds of creative tasks in order for him to fulfill the big vision that God had. There is an anointing that God is bringing upon you because you are saying yes to the big vision that God has on your life. The Spirit of God is going to come upon you that you are going to do things and perform things that in your own ability you've not been able to do before. Because why? Your mind and your, and your mindset is on the things of the kingdom of God. Amen. And so on Bezalel came the Spirit of God to do all kinds of crafts and, and, and creative works for the sake of building the temple. And then it says, gifted, God gifted and skilled all the craftsmen. Amen. Every one of us, every single one of us, there is a bigger picture, remember, Every single one of us are going to be skilled and anointed for what God has planned. Isn't that exciting? Whoa, I got goosebumps. God sent Oholiab. <laughs> as help. To Bezalel in all kinds of crafts and so forth. Now that's exciting too. God is going to send even more help. God is going to send whatever is needed to fulfill the vision. Do you understand? Bezalel and Oliab or what, Oliab and, and so forth, they didn't have to worry where the money is coming from. They didn't have to worry about things like that. They needed to be skilled for what God positioned them for. It's to, it's to fit the vision of God. Amen. It's to fit what God has planned. The dreams of the Lord, the purposes of God, all that He has planned, the destiny for your life and for us together. It is, we are to be anointed and gifted and skilled to fit the vision, to accommodate where the boundary lines have fallen for us. That's exciting. Amen. Um, the fourth point is, it's because it's time to have a kingdom mindset. It's time to have... The kingdom of God at the forefront of what we want to do 
everything that we want to do. Yes, there's been disappointments. And we look at Haggai. We look at in Haggai there and it says, yes, we've put money in, in purses or pockets that have got holes in. And it always seems as though there's lack, lack, lack. Why? Because we're so busy about our own thing. We're so concerned and worried about our own thing. And the more I worry about that, the more I'm concerned I'm about that, my own thing, the more, yes, I'm going to be disappointed. Do not worry about tomorrow what tomorrow will bring. But seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added to you. Amen. Do you see, we've got to get things in order, the kingdom of God is what is come, is, needs to be on the forefront of what we're doing at the moment. Everything, our life needs to be about the kingdom. I need to breathe, think, um, see, taste, smell. Mm, everything, the kingdom of God. Amen. I want to be consumed. About, yeah, touch. <laughs> I forgot about it. Touch it. Yes, I want to touch it. I want to see the reality and experience the reality of it all. And this is a time for our inheritance. Of us coming into our inheritance as the children of God. Amen. That we lack nothing. The Spirit of God in the time of Zerubbabel stirred the whole remnant. All of them. How many? All. all. Does that include you? Yes. I, didn't, no, I didn't hear everybody. Does that include you? Yes. Okay, let's try that again. Did that include you? Yes. <laughs> let's, let's say it like, I want to be part of this. Does that include you? Yes. yes! Amen. We're all part of this. We're all part of the inheritance of the... Dimitri, you didn't say yes. <laughs> I want to hear you say yes. Good. The Spirit of God stirred all, and they all began to build the house of God. Amen. And so that's what we are looking for now. And so um, the Lord is our inheritance. He is our husband. He is our everything. He is our all. And just in, just in closing here, is what the Lord showed us on Wednesday was the condition is depression. But the covenant is revelation. If you're finding yourself in a place where you are depressed, the answer to that is, is revelation from the Lord. That means you've got to wait in the presence of God until He brings revelation. You've got to align yourself. Align yourself. Set yourself before the Lord and wait so that He can begin to unfold revelation to you. And revelation not acted upon becomes religion. But revelation acted upon, bam, kingdom of God, manifestation, whoo, miraculous. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Set your minds, your ears, your eyes on the things of God. It says in 1 Corinthians 9 2, no eye has seen, no mind has conceived, no ear has heard what God has planned for those who love God. Him. Amen. But God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. Amen. Whoa, that's exciting. Praise God. Let's finish. Thank you, Jesus, that we are all together in this, all hands on deck. And not one of us, Lord, in this place is excluded. Not one of us, Lord, has been disqualified at all, no matter what. But at any moment, at any moment, Lord, once we receive revelation, we can act upon it and be obedient 
and see your kingdom come. And so, God, I pray that we will all have a stirring by your spirit to set your kingdom first. In Jesus' name. And that, Lord, yes, we will wait for you. We will wait for the revelation. And the revelation speaks of an appointed time. And that when we get it, we write it, we make it plain. So that whoever reads it, us included, we can run with it. In Jesus' name. Amen.